Okay, so I've been putting this video off for a while. Probably should have made this last Tuesday, but some complications came up on my end, which prevented me from seeing the movie. So I decided to wait until a week after to see it with my mom and my stepsister, which was a lot of fun. We saw it in IMAX 3D at AMC, which, by the way, AMCs are the best theaters. They are so cool. They have reclining seats. They have, like, little thingy you can push to get, like, food and stuff. Way better than Hollywood Boulevard, I'll say that right now. But anyway, this has been one of the most talked about movies that I've seen in a long time. And it's no surprise that it's Star Wars The Force Awakens, Episode 7, a movie that we've been waiting for for years. The hype train barreled on through, and it's been a little while. So I think now that the hype's died down just a little bit, I think we can talk about it now. So, yeah, Star Wars. Greetings, every people. This is your cult of personality speaking. Tune critics' name and tunes are the name of my game. So, Star Wars Episode 7 Force Awakens. I should probably mention right now, I am a huge Star Wars fan. I unfortunately grew up with Episodes 1 through 3 without having any idea what Episodes 4 through 6 were, but I was very quickly corrected on that. And I love Star Wars. I love the originals. I like the prequels, but only, only the third one. Only the third one because that's the one I feel that really only needs to be seen. You can skip one and two. But this has been a movie that has taken the world by storm. Star Wars has been part of, of pop culture for since it first started. It's timeless. And whether it was with the originals or with the prequels, it stayed in the mainstream audience. Now that Disney has its hands on it, whew, Star Wars is everywhere. Star Wars is a thing that's never going to die. It's, it's a moneymaker. People like it. People enjoy it. People don't want to see this go away. You see hundreds of like fans dedicated to this. Thousands, millions dedicated to this. So when Episode 7 came out, there was, uh, interestingly enough, there was a no-spoiler thing put on it. Like, nobody wanted any spoilers. Like, if you committed a Star Wars spoiler, like, if you spoiled any of it, like, you're dead. Like, you saw that thing where... Somebody apparently got their butt kicked because they said a spoiler in the theater and got put in the hospital because of it, but anyway, so, um, I'm gonna keep this, uh, I'm debating on keeping this either spoiler free or not, but there are one or two parts here that I'm gonna talk about, so if you haven't seen the movie by now, that's, that's surprising, but if you have seen it, then, you know, I think it's safe to watch this, so... I'll just put up a spoiler warning here. If you haven't seen it, you know, you can put, just put down in the comments what you think and just leave it at that. But I'm going to be talking about some parts during it. So let's start off with the good. The good, right off the bat, uh, my favorite character in this is Rey. Rey is an interesting character. She is a badass. She doesn't play herself as a damsel in distress. She knows what she's doing. She knows how to handle herself. And apparently she's in tune with the Force. Now, this is a cool thing because I liked that she is the main character. The trailers sort of made Finn look like the main character, but in reality, Rey is the real star here. You know, she's the one that, you know, eventually, like, gets in tune with the Force a little bit more and gets to fight Kylo Ren and does a pretty awesome lightsaber battle against him. Now, with that being said, um, not quite in favor of her not being featured as a part of any toy lines. Now this is relevant because uh, they did this with Black Widow and the Avengers. They didn't make any toys because they're just like, Ugh, boys aren't gonna like to play with girl action figures. <laughs> okay, that's all fine and well if she's not the main character, but Rey is the main character. She's a central part of the story, and you mean to tell me that eh, girls don't want to <laughs> boys won't play with girl action figures. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Black Widow is a badass. Rey is a badass. I think guys would like seeing a girl that's badass. Maybe that's just me. 
but the whole belief that that boys won't play with girl toys. Do I do I even need to? Do I even need to? I don't. Ray is a great character. Now I mentioned Finn. Finn is also an interesting character because we see him as a guy that just wants to make things right, but he isn't quite sure. He's put on the typical hero's journey formula, but he doesn't quite stick to it. In fact, he kind of abandons it at one point. And that's when it falls to Rey, and that's where the story kind of shifts in her direction. Which is cool, because she's the one that I think that deserves the development. Not saying, not saying that Finn doesn't deserve the development. But if you had to make me choose between the two, I'm going to pick Rey. And Finn kind of gets his butt kicked. So Now Poe... Oh, uh, Poe Dameron is an interesting character as well, because he's like, you know, the badass pilot. You know, he's the smooth talker, he's, you know, the handsome one. Yeah, he's, I will say that, he is. And he doesn't play too much into the story except for a few parts, but, you know, he gets a pretty cool thing near the end, you know, where he's going through, and uh, pew 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 shooting, and, um, god, what was the planet name? I can't remember. But where he's going through and he has to blow up, like, the planet, like, that's a scene very reminiscent of episode four. And that's another thing I want to mention. This movie has a lot of fan pandering and a lot of references. Fan pandering in Star Wars' case is not such a bad thing, because there will be a few things that will be like, oh, hey, I remember that, or, ooh, I remember this character, or, hey, that kind of reminds me of what happened like this, or, hey, that seems familiar, just something like that. And I think that's a good thing, because our generation... This generation that we're going with now has no idea what Star Wars is. So Star Wars Episode Seven is kind of the, the the beginning ground because then you can show your kids the originals and you don't have to show the prequels. That's the good thing. You don't have to show the prequels. You can only show the originals and it'll all lead up to this and it'll all make sense. So that's, I think, was very smart by them. And if you haven't seen the originals, well, what's, what's wrong with you, man? Star Wars. Like, come on, Star Wars. You can even show them, like, Clone Wars if you want to, or Rebels. Rebels le plays more into this, I think. But it's cool that they were able to do this movie with enough references and enough things from the past to entice people to see more Star Wars. And speaking of that, Han Solo, Chewbacca, and Princess Leia are in this, or General Leia, I should say. Han Solo makes this movie great. He, you, I, I could say that you don't need to do the movie with, with him, but I don't see how you could do it without him, if that makes any sense. He is, he plays the exact same character that you're used to, but you feel like, you feel a little bit more connected to him, if you will, and how he talks with Ray and stuff. You see how... He's changed over the years, how he's a little bit more responsible. The scenes between him and Leia really show off the best parts of his character. And yes, I know what happens to Han. Somebody tried to spoil that for me. But if he ever was to go out, I think that would have been the best way to do so. You know, he got some pretty cool scenes. Speaking of scenes, the action in this movie has improved quite a lot, I will say. The action, in terms of the fighting, uh, the battles in space, the lightsaber battles, specifically the one at the end on the planet, and the Millennium Falcon chase scene, which, by the way, had we seen that in the originals, oh boy, that would have been great. But that that chase scene is really good. And I can already people hear people saying, Eh, Rey is such a Mary Sue. How is she able to pilot the Millennium Falcon? How does she know so much? Eh, she's such a Mary Sue. Nah, nah, nah. You know, it's hard to talk about The Force Awakens with some of my Star Wars buddies when they just drop down the negatives constantly. I'm like, can we just say it was a good movie? I saw it with you guys, too. It was a pretty cool movie. Eh, but no, there was, we have to talk about this, we have to talk about that. Star Wars fans... <sighs> this is why I switched to being a Whovian. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> now, what else? What else can be said? Kylo Ren... Let's let's not talk about the lightsaber because I'm pretty sure just talking about the lightsaber when it first debuted caused a big old crapola storm 
that people would not shut up about, that's fine. But um, Kylo Ren as a character, I really enjoy. I'm always partial to villains if they have a good story behind them, and I think we just got a glimpse of it here. I'm very interested to see what they're going to do in Episode Eight with him. Because I have the feeling, maybe this is just me, where he's not entirely on the dark side. You know, maybe there's a theory that, you know, he could be working for the light side as a spy or something like that. And that, that kind of reminds me a little bit of Force Unleashed, in a way. I like the fact that they use Starkiller, too. <laughs> Starkiller base, Starkiller in the Force Unleashed game. I guess they had to reuse it somehow since the Force Unleashed is not canon, but I can understand why. Uh, I'm trying to think of, let's see, what didn't I like about this? Well, that's, that's the hard thing. I don't really have much that I don't like about this movie. Other than, like, nitpicks and, like, the plot holes and to where I found Ray's use of the Force to be a little... Not quite sure if I believe that or not. The story flowed really well. There were some great action bits. There were some great dramatic bits. There were some great moments from it. It all flowed together very nicely. Well, there were, I guess I didn't quite get what Captain Phasma was really doing in this movie. She didn't really do anything. She was kind of just there. Maybe she'll get a bigger part later on. Overall, though, I really enjoyed this. I don't have much complaints with it other than, like, a few tiny little things. But that does not deter away from the enjoyment that I had with this movie. Seeing it in, like, IMAX 3D was really cool. And that's the way you should see Star Wars. You should see it on the big screen. You definitely should. And if you haven't seen Star Wars by now, you you should. It's great to see that Star Wars is coming back. I'm great. I'm glad to see that it's making so much money and that it's going to dominate the box office and that it's going to revitalize Star Wars. But then again, Star Wars never really died, per se. It might have died a bit with the prequels, but afterwards, you know, Star Wars is alive and well. And I find it funny also during, during the trailers for that, they showed not just, okay, they showed trailers for Civil War, which hype levels, like here, then they showed a uh, trailer for Deadpool, hype levels up here. <laughs> they showed Batman vs. Superman, they showed Kung Fu Panda 3, they even showed Star Trek. I'm like, why are you showing a Star Trek trailer before a Star Wars movie? That's like showing a, a, a Batman vs. Superman trailer before Civil War, which they did, so I found that to be interesting. But, yeah, I think that about wraps up everything. It, this movie was great. It's better than all three of the prequels combined. It feels like we're on, on our way to an even bigger adventure, which I can't wait to see. Also, I had enough people complaining, oh, why did they bring Mark Hamill in for, like, only one scene? Well, it's to set up something big. It's to set up something huge. It's going to be... If anything, leading up to Luke versus Kylo Ren, I want to see Luke with a lightsaber again, okay? That's me. That's my hype levels, like, going up all the way up here. Like, that's going to be cool. So, <sighs> yep, that's my thoughts on Star Wars Force Awakens. Uh, glad I finally saw it when it was still in theaters. I was worried that I wouldn't get to see it at all and I'd have to pirate it online. That wouldn't be fair, though. That would be, well... Uh, that's a subject for another day. But yes, anyway, if you're a Star Wars fan, uh, please put your thoughts in the comments below what you thought about this movie, whether you liked it, whether you didn't like it, whatever. Like, comment, subscribe, Twitter, Patreon, all that good stuff. I should also mention, uh, after this video, I'm going to be having my uh, 2015 uh, end-of-the-year retrospective. And after that, I'm going to be switching to using my camcorder for thoughts on videos because I've had enough people say, why are you using your webcam for it? Well, it's, it seems like the most comfortable thing to do right now. So, yep, that takes care of that. Thank you guys for watching. This has been a very fun ride, and I can't wait to see you guys in 2016 for Pacific PonyCon and for other great stuff which I have lined up for my uh, secondary channel. Any who's... Um, that being said, Tune Critic, keeping you totally tuned for your entertainment. Stay awesome and have a nice day.